Hey guys, we're going to look at the benefits of international trade in this video, and we're going to use welfare analysis to do it. So, let's go back to the concept of consumer surplus, producer surplus, and total surplus as a measure of welfare. So if you guys never remind yourselves what they actually mean, I'd encourage you to go back to the video consumer surplus, producer surplus, and deadweight loss. That'll explain what they actually represent, and we're going to go use this idea of welfare analysis in uh, four coming videos as well. Okay, so we're going to look at this in terms of international trade and why it is actually beneficial for an economy. Okay, so the initial assumptions are in this economy that this country here with no trade is isolated from the rest of the world. Okay, and so no one here is allowed to export or import this product. Let's call this product good A. So product good A, or product A we should call it, isn't allowed to be exported and isn't allowed to be imported. And so in this scenario of no, no trade, this domestic market will reach an equilibrium eventually of P1 and Q1. And so as a result, we can see that the consumer surplus is everyone who wishes to purchase this product above the price at P1 and the producer surplus being B at everyone who is willing to sell at a price below the equilibrium price of P1. And so consumer surplus is A and producer surplus is B and the total surplus in society is the combined area of A plus B. Okay. So now we're going to look at the second scenario when there is international trade. An international trade available is below the equilibrium price. So as we know, the equilibrium price of the market without international trade is P1. However, with international trade, the world price, which is going to call PW, or the price of the world, is at PW. And this price is constant because we assume that this market is a very large market and that we are we we don't have enough power to affect the price we don't have enough consumer power to affect the price in the world market okay so as we can see here in the world price we can see that the the quantity willing or producers are willing to supply supply at is only q let's call this qs so domestic suppliers are only willing to supply at QS, whereas the demand for this product, good A, at that price domestically is at QD. So, like a little clear. Okay, so QD. So what this means is that to make up for this shortage of goods and services, producers or demanders or consumers in the economy will still tend to import this. So the difference between here, QD and QS is known as imports. So we look at this welfare analysis yet again. Let's just label all the different blocks. A, B, C, and D. We can see that prior with no trade, if we again draw this line here and split this up into A and B and D, then producer surplus here will be B and D, and total surplus will be A plus B plus D. We can see that at the moment, because consumers or domestic consumers are able to purchase internationally, then their consumer surplus will be this large triangle here this triangle here. So the consumer surplus with international trade will be A plus B plus C. And the producer surplus would only be D. So as we can see in society, producers are worse off by negative B and consumers are better off by plus B and plus C. So the overall change to total surplus 
would be a plus b plus c plus d and therefore society gains this c here so as a result society is better off given this international the prevalence or the presence of international trade now final example is where we're going to look at where the price or the world price is above the equilibrium price of a domestic market at P1. So we know that equilibrium is P1 and now let's assume that the world price is above it. So at this price domestic, domestic suppliers are willing to supply at QS but at that high price domestic buyers are only willing to purchase at QD. So now as we can see there is what we call a surplus in production. At this surplus in production, in a no trade market, we can see that suppliers would tend to move their supply backwards or contract their supply in order to make supply equal demand and so that they clear all their products. But in this market with international trade present, we can see that suppliers don't need to only sell to the domestic market they can actually sell to the world and the equilibrium world price is at PW and so what this means is that this surplus in production means that they can export so the difference between here between QS and QD represent exports so if the price of the or the equilibrium price of this product in the world market is above the equilibrium price of the domestic market then this, this uh, country would act as a net exporter of that good. So for example, Australia and coal, for example. Coal has a world price above the equilibrium price of the domestic market, and so people would tend, or producers would tend to export coal. So this is different from this scenario, where the world price is below the equilibrium price of the domestic market in which case the produce or the um, consumers in this economy would become a net importer so with a net exporter as a net exporter we can see we can again use welfare analysis to analyze this just going to rub this out to avoid any confusion just going to rub this P1 out here so that we don't avoid any confusion in our analysis okay so as we can see the consumer surplus here would only be a this little spot up here and the producer surplus or the exportable surplus would be B C and D so consumer surplus would only be A, producer surplus would be B plus C plus D, and total surplus again will be A plus B plus C plus D. And so consumers, if we look back to this graph here, if we separate A again into A plus E, A and let's call this C, we can see that consumers actually lose this area C there the producers gain this area C there so as a result A, B and C remain constant but the total surplus in this economy has increased by D so producer surplus is this area here and consumer surplus is this tiny little triangle here so as a result we can see that unless the world price here or here is the same as our domestic equilibrium price producers or consumers would gain depending on where this world price is so international trade is beneficial for the entire economy as we can see that total surplus would increase in both cases 
if the world price is either above or below the equilibrium price of a domestic market here at P1.